all, my name is Sarah Dici Ramsapici, and today we are reviewing the 2021 Tesla Model Y. This is my first car uh, in like five years after living in New York City, and well, I'm a tech YouTuber instead of a car YouTuber, so it'll probably be a little bit more of a techish review, so enjoy. And this video is sponsored by Omaze, where you can have the opportunity to win a Tesla Model S and $20,000 worth of cash. So if you wanna check out that right now, well, the link is in my description, and I will let you know the deets later on in the video. So let's talk about this Tesla Model Y. So the 2021 Model Y has an update over the 2020. So that is an updated center console. Um, it's a really nice matte grayish black instead of the piano black and you have updated cup holders. So this whole center console is brand new, including where you put your phone. So see right here, you have two wireless charging places for two phones. My only pet peeve is I have a mini iPhone and it's actually too short. Basically, I've been like putting my wallet on the bottom and that basically helps it charge. Um, so it's a little bit of a situation. You could probably buy or 3D print something to put on the bottom and just leave it here. I've just been too lazy. And it really, it's making me want to switch to just the normal iPhone 12 instead of the mini. I just love this guy so much. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's just so nice to have two wireless chargers when the passengers here, I can just be like, hey, need charge. What's great about the Tesla is you just have so many cameras everywhere and it records your dash cam footage. So if you're out rolling and a truck cuts you off and you just want the footage, you can hit this camera button to save the last hour of your dash cam footage. Look at this. I almost ran into that car. Did he? No. God, moron. The other thing that it has is sentry cam mode. Okay, this is all of my sentry cam footage. This essentially means when I'm parked somewhere, I'm out to eat or even at my home, if something happens, if a squirrel runs across my hood or a person maybe kicks my Tesla because they hate Teslas, guess what? You have them on camera. As you can tell, I should probably clear out my USB drive. Um, the USB is located in your glove box. Okay, so I was just bragging how amazing the assistant is when it comes to navigating. Navigate to Sikhe Thai Lao Restaurant. Oh my God, it got it. And it just instantly puts you on the route. But it's not very good when it comes to Spotify. You don't have Apple CarPlay on this. So honestly, I just hook up my phone and do it via Bluetooth, but they do have Spotify built in here. But say, play Justin Bieber. Oh my gosh, that was so loud. I am so sorry. If you see up here at the top, it says Justin Bieber radio. It's not actually Justin Bieber. So this is like a very specific pet peeve I have. Um, but when you say an artist, it doesn't go to uh, say Justin Bieber's top songs. And that's usually how I listen to music. Um, it just goes to the radio. So you basically only get one Justin Bieber song and then you're on to another artist. I think it's very lame because if I wanted to listen to Justin Bieber radio, I would say, listen to Justin Bieber radio. Well, it doesn't even like that. I didn't even notice that you have radio. I haven't even listened to radio. What even is radio? This is how you change your air. I think this is pretty cool. You know, there's no actual vents that you adjust, which honestly can get annoying if you can zoom out to the dash here. You know, usually this is where you adjust uh, your air that's coming in. Um, it's coming out right here and this is the only way to control that so it does take a little bit longer to go into the menu and say hey i want the air like this but you do you do have a lot of control the other update in the 2021 is now you have a heated steering wheel and this is where you can heat all of the seats every single seat has a seat warmer so i haven't had a car in about five years so skipping to a tesla was actually pretty fun for me because I didn't know the difference between like, oh, the steering or the region braking. Cause as you can tell, we're coming to a stop, but I haven't put my feet on the brakes yet. I just basically let off the gas and because it has region braking, um, your pedal, you do one driving pedal and it basically acts as a brake when you lift your foot off. The Model Y that I have is the long range. It's not the performance model, but what you will find with a lot of just electric cars in general, no matter what Tesla model you get, is that acceleration is fast. So I think mine goes zero to 60 in like four seconds. I didn't know that like normal cars, like the only car I had before this was a Honda Element that probably did zero to 60 in like nine seconds. Seconds. So no matter what that zero to 60 is, you're gonna get crazy acceleration on every Tesla. Okay, ready? Oh my 
It's like the joy of this car really is just the driving, it goes fast. You, no matter even if you're stepping on the gas or not, like just in normal everyday driving, you'll find that you're ahead of the pack every light, you know? It's kind of like, are you trying to race here? We got a port. Oh, we got a Taycan behind us. Cause I, that's the only other electric car that I really love is the Porsche, um, the Porsche Taycan, but they don't have that Tesla supercharging network. Thank you so much, Omaze, for sponsoring this video because, guys, you have the chance to win your own custom Tesla Model S. Look at this thing. It is gorgeous. It is by Unplugged Performance, and you'll also get $20,000 cash money, 348 mile range, and 0 to 60 in only 2.3 seconds. You can check out the Omaze link if you want to check out all of the fancy car editions that they did. I mean, I'm not really savvy with that, but one thing I did notice is it does include the $10,000 full self-driving package. This is something that I didn't get, but it includes being able to just hit your blinker in autopilot mode and your car will automatically change lanes in autopilot. And also you can steer it with your phone if you have to get in or out of a really tight parking spot and it'll also summon, which means it'll like come to you if you're in a parking lot, you can just hit the button real cut. It's like, it's magic. But what's so amazing about Amaze, it's not just about the prize, but the donations support an amazing charity. 501c3 seeks to mobilize the next generation to fight climate change by creating a global community that embraces low carbon culture. 501c3 intersects innovation and storytelling to bring attention to solutions that can help build a cleaner, more sustainable, and more helpful future. And also another charity, Give Power. They're on a mission to help the roughly 2.2 billion people around the world who don't have access to safely managed drinking water. The nonprofit uses its deep solar expertise to power and provide clean water, food security, and light to regions in need all around the world. So to potentially win this amazing Tesla Model S and also to support these amazing causes, go to omaze.com slash Ichi or check out that link in the description below. Okay, so we are at a supercharger. A big thing about, well, Teslas is they're electric. Hopefully you already know that. Um, if you can kind of hear the hum, that's the noise of um, the supercharging. What people don't know is they say, oh my gosh, okay, it takes, you know, 40 minutes for a full charge. I don't have that time. I was kind of nervous about that, to be honest, because I can have a charger in my parking garage, um, but it's going to be the very low voltage, like one to four miles per hour. So I'm going to be honest, there are days, two or three days where I just don't leave my house, which um, in those cases, hey, like I would come back to a car that's almost fully charged, which is pretty great, right? But if you have an actual house with a garage, you can buy basically essentially like your own supercharger. It does cost a pretty penny, but you can have that in your garage and it's definitely going to charge faster than one to four miles per hour because that's what I'm dealing with when I install the charger in the condo. I haven't had it yet, so I've been uh, just supercharging. I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and I've honestly had really great luck with superchargers. They're kind of everywhere, which is surprising. Good job, Texas. Um, I have one close to where I live, so um, I just head over here, and when I'm really low, like 30, 40 miles, you can actually get a solid charge in 10 minutes. Um, if I just need to head home, I need like 30 miles to head home, I will literally go to a supercharger for only 5, 10 minutes, and then just drive home. So we're in here for 10 minutes. We started at 91 miles, and I'll let you know what we get up to. Um, with only 10 minutes. But again, the lower your battery is, the faster it's gonna charge. Once you get up to 200 miles, 280, that's when the charging really, really slows down. So the majority of your time, like the time remaining is at the very end. So um, if you just need a quick zap, to go 30 miles, it is pretty quick. So when you're charging, there are a lot of options. There's actually like card games, a lot of different games that you can play, but there's also theater where you can just watch full screen YouTube videos or Netflix videos. Now, I will say, as you can see, it's pretty slow. Of course, it looks great on this screen once you load it up, but honestly, I would just default to watching things on my phone just because this like 10 to 15 seconds of loading is enough to just make me angry and just 
head to my phone. So yeah, let's just see how long. Okay, oh look, a Mr. Beast video. Oh, I'm not logged in, I gotta log in. Oh, the ads, I need to, okay, so you need YouTube Premium for a good experience. <laughs> um, but once you get it full screened and you're, you're patient enough, um, this is actually awesome to have, especially if you have little kids and you're charging, you know, like uh, put, on, put on some stuff so they will stop yelling at you for doing nothing for 30 minutes in your car. It's not doing very well. The the Tesla Connect, the LTE. Wow. Do better. I admire the idea though. I wanna I wanna like swipe up. I want it to be an iPad. I wish they had swiping features. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, so I've been timing us. Uh, we've been at the supercharger for 20 minutes. So in the first 12 minutes, we got 55 miles. And then the next eight minutes, we got 44. So as you can see already, it, it just like it decreases the amount of miles you get as time goes on. So now we're just about to hit 200 miles so that's when it slows down a little bit. So this is where you can see your charging stats. The port should open automatically when you get to a supercharger and you put the charger close to your car. Okay, so I just unplugged the charger. We went from 90 to 206 in a little over 24, 25 minutes. But as you can tell, there's this little arrow here. So this is where you can kind of set the limit. Oh, I have to press set limit. Come on, Sarah. Um, this is by default. It's not gonna charge your battery all the way. So naturally, just the way batteries work, if you you want them to last longer, you don't want to charge fully every single time. So I was a little confused uh, when I first got my car. It was only charging to like 280 and I was like, wait, I thought my range was more. This is why. So you can set these different limits and I basically set it to where it does, I think like right up to here, it does 300. And then, you know, if you're doing a longer trip, you're road tripping, you'll want to move it all the way to the right and that charges to your maximum range. And then also pro tip, when you're at a supercharger and you're by a restaurant, say you want to go eat and you know that limit is set to okay I'm only going to charge to like 80% of my battery. So uh, that would be around 280 for me. If that limit is set, your supercharging is only gonna take around 30 minutes. And if you're just at your restaurant having a good old time, not paying attention to your notifications because the Tesla app does say, hey, your charging is done in five minutes. If you're not paying attention to that, you're gonna get slapped with some some late fees because you haven't picked up your car and hey, there there's another Tesla that might need to charge at the supercharger and you're not moving your car. So if you're having like a full meal and it's probably gonna take Take like 45 50 maybe an hour uh, strongly recommend to just set your charging limit all the way to the right so it's gonna charge um, your full battery to the max because that lasts like literally 10 miles takes so long so you won't get uh, yeah slapped in the face with those with those fees um, however you probably don't want to do that if the supercharger is super busy and there's like no spots open because that wouldn't be nice to your fellow Tesla owner so I would say 60% of the time I just like sit in my car and answer emails um, and then the other percent I'm like with John we go eat or we go um, shop somewhere or something like that. misconception on how autopilot works especially when it's in the news of someone getting in a crazy crash and they just assume oh it's a Tesla it was self-driving well the full self-driving the thing that you hear about in the news of it driving everywhere that's still in beta only a couple thousand people have it and there are so many safety measures that you have to abide by to have it like you have to be in the seat for autopilot you have to be in the seat for full self-driving and you have to have your hand on the steering well so every Tesla comes with autopilot and so there's basically two phases there is like an adaptive cruise control and then there is the autopilot okay so let's talk about that adaptive cruise control basically when you go down one on the stock that keeps you at a speed so that's basically like your typical cruise control but what's cool about it is it will slow down if there's a car in front of you so as you can see there's this 18 wheeler in front of me so I'm going 66 miles per hour it's not going the max of 75 because hey there's a car in front of me so it's gonna slow down so if this car changes lanes or maybe he speeds up the miles per hour will speed up accordingly and as you can see right here I'm gonna change um, it to one car length so that means it's gonna get closer 
and then I can change it to three car lengths. That's where I definitely feel the most comfortable. Okay, so that's adaptive cruise control. That is a pretty common feature, but let's talk about autopilot because that's what makes the Tesla special. So we already have our speed set. And again, you can change that speed by uh, going up and down on this right joystick. So I changed it to 71 max because I think the speed limit is like 70. So I'm gonna go down in the stock twice. And as you can see, it has this blue icon and this means it is going to keep me in my lane. Um, and so as you can see, I'm keeping my hand on the wheel. If you don't keep your hand on the wheel, it's gonna beep at you. It's gonna say, hey, apply a slight force to the wheel. So you can't just, I mean, I could, I could chill. My car is driving for me. Look at how exciting. Wow. Okay, so see, apply a slight turning force to a steering wheel. So I basically nudged it a little bit and now we're good. So to avoid that notification because it is kind of annoying uh, I just drive with my hand on the steering wheel just like this it keeps a pressure so it knows I'm here it knows a human is paying attention and then if I want to get out of autopilot I just do a light press on the brake and I'm back to just driving like normal so it's kind of fun to watch this because it visualizes a lot of these like spokes that we see on the side of the road but also if it's cones you'll you'll see it on the screen and that's kind of preparing you for that full self-driving feature Tesla does not use lidar it uses full vision software and it's really good at seeing what's around you and so hopefully it's trying to like get you used to hey there's going to be a world in the next one or two years where your car can take you from point A to point B and you don't have to turn on autopilot, turn it off. It's just gonna take you to your destination. Where is an exit? Have you also noticed how just like every highway is a toll road all of a sudden? Like what's up with that? So dumb. Like have you ever tried to go to Plano? Yeah, forget about it. It's gonna cost so much money in tolls. You know what, this is the first time I've ever said this, but this is good that we're actually in traffic because I can show you how autopilot works in a start and stop situation. Um, so autopilot, it is meant to be used where there are clear lines and dividers between cars and then also like in a highway situation. As you can tell, we're going pretty slow. Um, the max is set to 70 um, but we're going around 20 so if I activate autopilot it's keeping me in my lane but it didn't zoom up to 70 but oh it's going quick because now we're going okay see so that was really good so it sees that there's cars in front of us so it's keeping me in my lane I'm going 49 miles per hour currently and it's gradually increasing the speed and that beep was it wanted me to apply the force on the wheel okay so see we have people stopping so this will be scary for like first time autopiloters because you're like, is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? People are at a stop. So I'll show you guys how it basically comes to a complete stop. I haven't pressed the brakes. We're at 30 miles per hour, 28, 25, 20. So it almost came to a complete stop. It's going again. So this is all autopilot. And when you're on the highway, it will kick back in. Even if you come to a complete stop, it'll know when to go again and it'll keep you at a good pace. Okay, so I do have to shift out of autopilot to lane change. If you buy the full self-driving package, which is $10,000, I just thought that was way too expensive for the you know few features that you get. But if you purchase that out of the gate, when you're in autopilot, you can automatically switch lanes by just engaging the uh, turn signal. So if I need to change lanes, I have to do that manually, like normals, like having a normal car. But in my understanding for the people who have that full self-driving, that works really well. And it enables a more like just passive autopilot experience where you, you don't really have to hop out of it a lot, which is nice, you know? You just put on the turn signal and your Tesla will just change lanes for you when it is free. So whether it's the acceleration or using autopilot, one thing that a Tesla is, is just fun. It is so fun. And so if you have kids, whether it's the entertainment center, you know, you can watch Netflix, YouTube while you're charging or the toy box. The toy box is just quirky stuff that there's no point that it's in a car, but it's just fun. So we got Brady over here sitting in the passenger side seat. If he didn't know about this, I could trigger like, see this button right here. This tr can trigger a fart. So we could be driving and I could be like, Brady! Unbelievable. Oh my God, that is disgusting. 
interesting. I mean, how fun is that? That is just, that's just a blast. So you can assign, you know, these, there's like literally 10 different farts to choose. Like you have choices. It's not just a standard fart noise, right? People love to show Tesla delivery days. And I did film that. That's a whole video. I'll link it up here. And when I got the Model Y, it was a very exciting day. But a lot of people have quality control issues. That's a big thing with Tesla. Hey, if you're buying a $50,000 car, you don't want to see huge panel gaps between the doors, right? You just don't want to see that. And there's a lot of people on YouTube that complain about this and it got me so nervous for picking up my car. But I checked everything and it was fine. I've had literally zero issues. I haven't had to go to a repair center or any of that. But what I liked about Tesla is not owning a car for five years, I got super nervous about the maintenance. I started looking up, okay, like a Porsche Cayenne, what do you have to do with that? Like, oh, premium f fuel, oil changes, you have to go in the dealership, it costs X amount of to do this and that, and that scared me a lot. The fact that Tesla just has an app, and if you have an issue with your car, you just message them, and they come to you if it's something that they can fix, you know, outside of their service centers. I love that idea, that just seems so easy, and it's such a great transition for someone who hasn't been a car owner for a while. Um, so when I picked it up, yeah, had zero issues. I feel like that's probably valid to say to put my my experience in the ever abundant pool of people that have said, oh my gosh, I had so many issues. I had to send it back X, Y, Z. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been great so far besides me accidentally doing this. But a Sony. You know it. Are you know it. This? Oh, Ooh. I should know it. This. That's the first time that I've ever done that just because I'm in a hurry. We're probably gonna have the Should biggest check that? scuff. Oh yeah, we'll check it, we'll Ooh. check it. Oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> okay. okay, that's pretty bad. It literally took off like a chunk of tire. No! Okay, well see, this is exactly what people are talking about. If you can get like a close up of this, I got my first like scuff. And it's really hard, you can't just go get black paint. It's really hard to cover up. So that's just gonna be a problem until I have to like replace a tire or something in a year or two. Dang it! It could be worse. If you wanna get a close up of each tire, all of them are in pristine condition. So I've done a good job so far. You know what was so funny? In this video, I was gonna talk about how everyone talks about the black tires and how they can get scuffed up easily. And I wanted to say, oh, I haven't worried about that because I'm a good driver. You know what, guys? You live and you learn. It could be worse. In my first Tesla video, I talked about why I picked the certain skew that I did. Um, you know, the interior, the white interior, the gray outside, the black rims. Um, but I feel like we need a little update on how this white interior has aged because it's so cool and it's definitely the Tesla look. However, I wear a lot of black jeans and yes, it actually does rub off on the white chairs. And it's something that when I talk to the Tesla guys, they're like, oh no, it's so easy to clean. You don't even have to worry about it. It's actually easier to clean than the black chairs. And I was like, okay. And maybe they have a point that it's easy to, you know, actually clean, but that doesn't discount the fact that you will see uh, the, the wear on the chairs. So I just bought a magic eraser and I'm gonna see if it's actually easy to clean these. We're gonna, we're gonna put them to the test. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. This is, oh wow. Oh my God, why is it so dirty? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, that's actually pretty gross. Okay, this shows that one, okay, dirt comes off, but two, maybe don't wear black jeans that often. That's like my entire wardrobe. So I'm just gonna have to do this with the magic eraser every other month. Oh my gosh. So this is the original white, and then this is what it was. I don't have a ton of wear up here, but definitely down here. Okay, not bad after one scrub. So that was just 
one magic eraser and then I just dried it off with toilet paper. Much better. Okay, so I know this video was a long one. I wanted to keep it kind of casual for the people out there um, who aren't fully aware of Tesla features and you're kind of like, how does that autopilot work? I've heard about it in the news um, or about the charging because I know I was really scared about the whole charging thing, ah, not being able to fill up you know, at a gas station, but it really hasn't been uh, that difficult for me. And I'm just using superchargers. I don't even have a charger at home yet. And I hope you also enjoyed that initial footage in Blanco, which is an all white photo studio that I just opened up in Grapevine, Texas. So if you're like, hey, that looks cool. You could pull a car in it. Or if you have a photo video shoot that you want to do in the Dallas Fort Worth area, hey, check out bookblanco.com. You can check out my Tesla link in the description below. Yes, if you buy a Tesla with my referral link, we will both get free supercharging miles. I think it's like a thousand miles. And then what else do I need to promote? Oh yeah, check out my Omaze link in the description below. Uh, this was a fun one. Okay, let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time guys, okay, bye.